Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and welcome to this special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Where we're going to look at all things Ixalan. We'll be looking at the hottest cards, the coldest cards right now from the set, and what values are doing. Are they jumping? Which ones are going down? Which are going up? Now, with that being said, just a fast reminder, this is still very early into Ixalan's lifespan. So these cards are going to move around a lot. They're very unstable right now, so keep that in mind. That's the reason I have not incorporated them yet into the regular Saturday Market Watch. They are very turbulent, but I thought it was still worth talking about them individually in this special edition. Now, we're seeing something we haven't seen before because of the new Pro Tour schedule. The Pro Tour has been pushed back a little bit starting with this set. Now, the Players' Championship is coming up pretty soon, but a lot of times players don't pay too much attention to that when it comes to deck building because it's a very different meta due to the type of tournament that is. So players are jumping on cards and singles a little bit earlier than normal. Typically, you see the Star City games open. You have a couple weeks where people are building, tweaking, trying to figure out what they want to do, but they kind of wait until the Pro Tour to make final decisions. Well, with the Pro Tour being much later now, Players are jumping on what they're seeing week one out of Star City Games Open, which is going to lead to some probably very turbulent pricing over the next few weeks because we know from experience what happens week one isn't necessarily what happens week two or week three. If players are engaging a little too early in some of these decks, they may actually do an about face once we get closer to the Pro Tour. So we'll have to kind of see how that pans out. Now, quickly before we get into the card values, just a fast reminder, if you're looking for a way to support the channel and what we do here, just check out the description below. You'll find our Patreon linked below. You'll find some product links for Amazon if you make any purchases. Once you go via those links, we'll get a small percentage. And also Flipside Gaming was nice enough to give our viewers a promo code. So check that out. You can pre-order Iconic Masters right now and also pick up Ixalan if you need to. So with that being said, let's get into it. And before we get into the top 10 cold cards of Ixalan, I wanted to check in with the values of the Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers. A lot of people ask about these because, sure, you can go to any big box store or your LGS and pick these up if you want to pay for the entire deck. But some players just want the Planeswalkers and they have to make a decision. Is it a good time to buy? I would say this. They're both on the decline right now. I'd probably wait a little bit. Let more packs get open. These prices will go down. If you just want the deck, I mean, cool, pick up the deck. You can certainly do that. But if you're just looking to pick up the Planeswalker, I'd wait a little bit. The Watley Dinosaur Knight is down 37 cents this week to 837. And Jace Ingenious Mind Mage is down 74 cents to 779. All right, let's move on to the top 10 Ixalan cards that have lost value this week. Now, what you're going to see here are a number of cards that just really didn't show up in the first week of the Star City Games Open. Doesn't mean they won't show up later, so do keep that in mind. But some of these cards are maybe a little bit overvalued coming out of the pre-release season, and some of them are just going down to where they should be and what you would expect to pay for them. So let's take a look and see what we got, starting with number 10. Thematic Compass, down 35 cents this week to $2. And this is a card that I don't really see doing a whole lot in standard because it's a little conditional. The other side is cool. I mean, it's basically kind of like a Maze of Ith. And Maze of Ith is a good card, but it depends on your matchup. It's not going to be good against all strategies, right? And I don't really think you want this taking up a spot in your sideboard. And the activation on the front side just is a little too expensive, I think, for what it's doing. There's just better ways to find your colors and find your mana. So it kind of is what it is. I think it's an interesting commander card, especially for that Maze of Ith style ability. It could be fun there, especially keeping commander damage off your back or something like that, at least from one player every cycle. But aside from that, it's not really that surprising to see this one ticking down. Number nine, Dire Fleet Ravenger. This is our first Mythic today. It's down 39 cents to 3.95. Now, I was pretty hard on this card during the pre-release season in the set review and such, but yeah, I just never saw it making its way to standard. I felt like that ability was just a little too high variance depending on what's going on in the game. You don't need to take a risk like that for no real reason, especially for five mana. There's a lot of good five mana cards in Ixalan. So why I would gravitate to this one over others was kind of beyond me. I mean, I like Menace Death Touch as a 4-4 four, four for 5. It's not bad at all. I mean, it's great if you open this unlimited, but I almost felt like I would prefer like Menace First Strike or something like that. Just make this card harder to evade and harder to get rid of, and it could have been a little more interesting, I guess. I don't know. It is a card that I would like to try out at some time, just kind of see how it plays. Like I said, it's definitely great for limited purposes, if nothing else, but I just didn't really see it crossing over into standard very well. 
Number eight, Sword Point Diplomacy, down 47 cents to 79 cents. Another one I was kind of hard on in the pre-release. There is a role for this card, though. Like, if you're in a Rakdos Burn deck or something like that, where this card is basically just a burn spell because you're making your opponent either take burn from this or burn from the burn spells you're showing them, <laughs> then, yeah, sure, it's definitely playable by all means. But I think the role is so niche that it's going to be hard for this card to maintain any kind of value. Now, some people saw this card initially and just saw that, hey, I get to perhaps draw three cards, and if I don't, I'm damaging my opponent. This sounds great, but it just gives your opponent way too many options and is very bad if you're behind. Vance's Blasting Cannons coming in at number 7, down 52 cents to 229. I like this card a lot. I think the casting cost is a tad awkward, though, because decks that want this kind of thing don't want to necessarily be flooding into 4 mana early on. So it feels a little counterintuitive for like a fast, aggressive red deck, and that's the deck that kind of wants it. So because of that, I feel like it's going to have a hard time getting a foothold in the standard format, and we kind of saw that week one. It was around here or there, but I don't know how well it actually performed. Now, if that deck evolves a little bit as the meta evolves, or maybe in future metas, and red starts to cling more to a mid rangey or even big red style deck, then maybe this thing has a chance. But again, it performs better in the more sleek aggro decks, and the casting cost just feels a little off for that. Maybe if it was a red and two, it would have been a lot different. But because of that, I think this card is going to have a hard time just generally. Number six, Repeating Barrage, down 56 cents to 97 cents. This is a card I like a lot. But it's just in an awkward spot right now in the meta, I think. And again, that could change in the future. I like the repeatability of this particular card. The fact that you can keep your opponent down with this and keep using it. I think it's kind of awesome. But the thing is, like, look at decks like Ramnap Red, for example. Do they need this? I mean, now they even have Lightning Strike. I feel like this almost just slows them down and they don't need to take the time and energy to make this happen because they can just Lightning Strike something, right? <laughs> so they're just so good in Streamline right now. I just don't know if this fits in too well. Number five, Dowsing Dagger, down 79 cents to 331. And this is a card that has a great payoff if you're trying to ramp into stuff. But if you're not trying to ramp into anything in particular, the card's not all that great. It just doesn't have a roll. And I think that's what we're seeing, at least in week one. There weren't a lot of people saying, hey, I need to get three mana of any color repeatedly for my deck. <laughs> and because of that, I don't really need to bother with this card because I do have to jump through some hoops to get there to begin with. Now, with that being said, it's still at $3.31 because it is a good commander card. I think this is a card I'd love to pick up for Commander and can see myself running in a lot of different Commander builds. So I think that's where this card will find life. And it could still see standard play in the future if there's ramp decks, especially ramp decks that are concerned about color fixing. Number four, Carnage Tyrant. All right, this is down at dollar roll one this week to 2724. This is a mythic as well. Now, what happened with Carnage Tyrant this weekend? Well, the Dinosaur deck existed. It just didn't perform very well. And the highest placement in the Star City Games Open was 45th place. So that didn't look so good. I don't think the Dinosaur deck's necessarily down and out. It just needs to probably be reworked, rethought, and revamped a little bit. Maybe you throw a little white in there, try to go Naya. I don't know. But the Gruel deck just felt a little underwhelming this weekend. With that being said, though, Carnage Tyrant's actually still a good card and saw play in other decks that were running green. So it could be in places like... Black Green Constrictor, for example, right? It doesn't need to be in the Dinosaur deck. And because of that, this card is going to continue to see play regardless of what happens to the Dinosaur tribe. Now, counter to that, though, the card is very expensive. 2724, yes, it's a mythic, but as packs get open, it's not going to be able to maintain that kind of value, especially if there's not a strong Dinosaur deck out there in the field. So expect this to continue to come down probably relatively quickly. Number three, Jace Cunning Castaway, down $1.25 to $13.99. Okay, so pre-release time, Planeswalkers are always a little bit high-priced, and once packs get open, they start coming down. That's pretty normal, unless the Planeswalker sees huge play, like in the first few weeks of the format. That did not happen with Jace. Jace wasn't really around at all in the first week of the format. Not to say that this card won't see play. I'm pretty confident that this card is good enough to see standard play, Okay, sure, not week one, but I don't feel like this was a week one card. This is like a week three, week four, week five card once people get a chance to wrap their head around the format a little bit. So don't count Jace out or anything like that. But at least for right now, Jace is going to tick down a little bit, especially as more enter circulation. Number two, Watley Warrior Poet, down $1.33 to eleven twenty-eight. Well, a lot of things I said about Jace are true about this one, too. 
But there's an added issue with this one. I think this card is going to have a hard time if dinosaurs don't excel. And even the dinosaur decks that we saw, they were Gruul decks, and they were running Samu and not Iwali. So that's a little awkward for this card. And I think this card is going to have kind of a hard time. I think we'll do better in Commander, maybe some Commander Dinosaur builds, stuff like that. But because of that, this card is going to slide probably even quicker than Jace. And coming in at number one, Growing Rights of Itlamok, down 259 this week to 1275. So a card that turns into a virtual Gaia's Cradle, you know is going to be good, right? It's just a matter of time. The thing that's awkward right now, same thing that we talked about with Dowsing Dagger, what am I ramping into exactly? And this card has maybe a little more awkwardness too because it does require you to get some creatures to turn it and then have some creatures on the table for it to matter. And there's a lot of sweep spells out there right now, a lot of good ones. We're going to see at least one in our top 10 that are increasing in value. So that's definitely a concern for this card just generally. I think it's an awesome commander card though, and I do think this could even see play in modern, and it will see standard play at some point in its lifetime. I just don't think, again, that's week one, probably not week two, maybe not even this meta. Maybe things need to shake up a little bit before that happens. This card is a rare as well. It's not a mythic, so it's a very high price point for a rare. A lot of packs will be open. This card is going to continue to slide pretty aggressively, so keep that in mind if you're trying to pick these up. Now, I do want to point out one thing, though, and this is going to become relevant, too, in the next list we look at the cards going up in value. We've been used to some really cheap rares, especially, even cheap mythics and standard. I do think that could change a little bit due to the fact that masterpieces are not included in the set. It means there's less incidental opening going on to try to hit masterpieces. So because of that, it might be a little bit harder to pick up your normal singles than we're used to, at least for the course of the last year or so. So some of these cards, which normally I would say this card will probably fall down to maybe the $3, $4 range, maybe it sticks around the $7, $8 range for a little while, just because circulation and getting these cards out there is going to be a lot slower and maybe not as stable as it is when people are trying to search for those masterpieces. So just something to think about there. All right, let's move on to the top 10 cards that have gained value this week. As you can expect, you're going to see a lot of cards that performed well during the first week of the open, and a lot of mana-based cards here too, which makes sense. Number 10, Dragon Skull Summit, up 18 cents to 268. Okay, you're going to see three check lands on the list today, all lands that played important roles in the mana base this past weekend, of course, this being one of them. And yeah, these are good lands, and they were printed a whole bunch of times in the past, but it's been a while. Now they're in standard. People are going to need them to play. If folks who play standard sold theirs off or traded theirs off, then they're going to need new ones. I love the new art on these, so they're a home run. I mean, these are great in two-color decks. They're pretty good in three-color decks, maybe not as good in four or five-color decks, but it feels like for the most part, with the exception of like maybe four-color energy or something like that, Ixalan standard feels two, three colors most of the time. So these are going to fit in pretty well. Number nine, another one, Rootbound Crag, up 35 cents to 279. I love how they work that dinosaur in there. Like, it, just enough to give you this double take. Like, is that a land? What is that? <laughs> Why is there a dinosaur on it? So, it looks pretty sweet. Number eight, Ripjaw Raptor, up 36 cents to 1006. Now, here's a rare, mind you, not a mythic, going up to past the $10 mark a week into the life of the set. That's saying something. You don't normally see that. Now, what does it mean? Because we already said the dinosaur deck hasn't done all of that well. Well, this card's still really good. And much like the card we looked at earlier, this can see play outside of dinosaur decks. It's just a good green creature. It's going to continue to see play. And again, that rarity means it should go down in value a little bit, at least pretty soon as packs get open. But don't expect the drops that we've seen in the sets that hold masterpieces. Number seven, Gisath Sun's Avatar. Up 64 cents to 713. Okay, you're not really trying to play this in standard, right? But this is an awesome commander card. The commander players that are trying to build that dinosaur deck, which does look pretty sweet, they're going to need to pick this up. So it's climbing up a little this week. Expect this to trend down, though, once those players get their copies. Number six, Drown Catacomb, up $1.10 to 455. Another check land, great for any Grixis build, especially whether that's improvise or control. Number five, Varaska's Contempt up $1.19 to 444. Not too much to say about this card. Fantastic removal. We saw it on a lot of sideboards. We saw it in some main decks over the first weekend. That's not going to change. This card will continue to see plenty of play. Number four, Settle the Wreckage, up $1.66 to 407. This card actually looked pretty sweet in some of those approach decks as a control card. They were running three of these in the main, one in the board, also running Fumigate as well, because this isn't always a 100% blow up the board play but sometimes it's just simply an expensive path and that's still really good and sometimes it is still a blowout if your opponent's super aggro and coming in to attack and this card can make a big difference forward instant speed 
Really, really sweet card. It will continue to see play. Number three, search for his Kanta up 205 to $7. Another card we saw in the approach decks to help you get to the cards you need. Also good in control decks showing up in things like Grixis Control. So yes, this is going to be a control staple for some time to come. Number two, Death Gorge Scavenger up 301 to $5. Card that saw a lot of play out of sideboards. I did see it, of course, in the Dinosaur main deck, but again, that deck didn't do so hot. But out of sideboards, this thing was showing up in a lot of unexpected places. It hoses the graveyard pretty well, deals with things like the Esper Gift deck. Number one, the big card of the weekend, Hostage Taker, up 1203 to 1825. This is a rare. This is a rare that's approaching the $20 mark. Now, this is a huge spike, and like I said earlier, with the Pro Tour being later, this is kind of like the Pro Tour spike, and we're seeing it early now. So it's kind of awkward, kind of different than what we're used to, but this is an example of something you would typically see like after the Pro Tour occurred. Well, this time it's happening week one, basically. Hostage Shaker is amazing. It looked amazing. It was in a number of great decks. Showed up in the Saltai Energy deck, which came in first and third in Star City Games Open. Showed up other places, too. I mean, you found these things, and a lot of other decks are in the colors. So, yeah, Hostage Shaker looks super sweet, and there's a big scramble right now to pick up play sets of them, and that's why you're seeing this spike. This will snap back. This will come down. It's a very, very high price for a rare, even in a set that doesn't have masterpieces. So be a little patient with this one. But, yeah, the card's the real deal. It's pretty amazing. All right, with that being said, that's our look at Ixalan. So I'm going to play things by ear over the course of the next couple of weeks. Once I feel like the cards have stabilized a little bit, I'll start working them into the regular market watch. But until then, I'll do updates like this so that you can still keep an eye on them as they move. I do think they're going to be pretty turbulent, at least for another week or two. So I'll keep an eye on it. And until next time, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.